Hi everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my channel. My name is Cherie and um, I hope you're having a great day. And um, Today we're going to go through some scripture writing again and go over a couple scriptures. I hope that uh, you get something from this video. If you do, just hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I'd really appreciate it. Um, it's kind of a cloudy day here in Kentucky today. It's not really sunny. Maybe the sun will burn that haze off after a while, but we've had some really pretty weather. So if you want to get your Bibles, if you haven't already, uh, we're going to be in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And that's our scripture writing for today. So uh, if you want to um, go on and do that, you can pause the video and go get that if you want. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to get my stuff ready. I've not got my stuff ready yet. I just wanted to get on here and say hi and get this done. I did not get a chance to do yesterday's at all. So I skipped yesterday, but that's okay because sometimes we just can't get to it every day. And that's all right, too. You know, I did pray yesterday and stuff like that. So, you know, it's okay. Don't, don't hound on yourself if you skip days or something. It's okay. You can always just read it. If you don't want to write it, you can just read it. So, let me get this going here. I'll flip my camera around here in just a minute. I've got to get to, got to get situated here. Okay. Let's see. This one's good today. Very good today. Okay, let me flip you around here. There we go. Let me get my finger out of the way. All right. So, let me get my bearings again. Okay, today is... Today is 10, 13, 21. And we are going to be in 2 Timothy. Chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And in verse 6, we'll read it. Uh, let me take you over here to my Bible in case you don't have yours out. You can read along with us. Whoa, I'm sorry I dropped you. Hope I didn't knock your head off. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. It says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit of God, the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. Now, the life lessons in this is, it says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flames the gift of God which is in you. Fan into flame in this verse means to incite, stir up, or stimulate. We are to encourage and motivate others to the faithful to the Lord. Excuse me, others to be faithful to the Lord. God never takes away the spiritual gifts that he bestows upon us, but they can lose their effectiveness through our neglect or misuse that God instructs us to use our gifts for the benefit of his people in obedience to him. And verse 7 says, The spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Fear focuses our attention on ourselves and on things we do not need to consider. It fills our minds with hypothetical situations that all end in defeat and ruination. Eventually, it utterly consumes us. This is why we cannot shrink back in obeying God and using the gifts he's given us because he's ultimately in control of our futures. And we are never victims of our circumstances. We are overwhelmingly triumphant in Christ and we must act like it. And isn't that the truth? We need to spread the gospel. We need to tell others about Jesus and spread the gospel and live a life the best we can according to him, according to his word. And it says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into the a flame, to fan into flame 
the gift of God, which is in you. Through the lane, on of my hands, in verse seven, for the spirit. of God gave us for the spirit God gave us I keep wanting to say of God for the spirit God gave us does not take does not make excuse me does not make us timid I can't write and talk at the same time <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not chewing gum too huh but gives us power. I'm trying to do three things at once here. This isn't easy. I'm trying to hold this camera and keep you in frame. Write this. Look at my Bible. <laughs> and I'm not doing so good. The Spirit of God gave the Spirit God get for the Spirit God gave us doesn't make uh, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Okay, and as it said here, we cannot shrink back into obeying God and using the gifts he's given us because he's ultimately in control of our futures. And we are never victims of our circumstances. I like that. We are overwhelmingly triumphant in Christ, and we must act like it. So we are not going to be victims of our circumstances. If things happen that are not good and it gets you down, we are going to pick ourselves right back up and dust ourselves off, and we're going to keep going in the name of Jesus, right? Right. That is what we are going to We are. So um, anyway, that's all there is to writing that scripture out. I just wrote it out, and that's all there is to it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that... Um, you know what? Wait a minute. I just seen something in this Bible that I didn't realize was on there. It says, how can I combat my fears? Hey, this goes right into what we're studying. Hang on a minute. I about skipped a good part here. I'm so sorry. It says 2 Timothy verses 1 and 7. So that was one of, oops, I'm sorry. That was one of our verses. So let's see what it says about that. If I can go over it real quick, okay? I won't keep you long. Let me see if I can pick Okay, I'll get you the gist of it. Um, Paul's words to Timothy are equally God's words to you. He has given each one of us a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Therefore, we never should respond to circumstances or people in fear because we have the power of God living within us, the very power that dispels all fear and anxiety. Number one, ask for God's help. When fear strikes, immediately ask for God's help. Tap into his power. Let me get you over here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find where we're at here. Okay. <clears throat> Tap into his power and allow him to encourage your heart. Remember when Peter tried to walk on the water to Jesus, but his fear overcame him? And when he found himself in trouble and fear sinking in the sea, he had the right response. He asked for God's help. Lord, save me. This is your best response. It should be your best first response anytime you feel fearful. Number two, ask the Lord to fill your heart with a sense of his abiding love. Love is a powerful antidote to fear. God's love has the ability to el eliminate it. I remember the first time I preached in my home church. I was young and had a fear attack. I felt the people would expect more from me than a group of strangers might expect. So what helped me? I read the words of the Lord to Joshua in Joshua. And then I turned my focus to the people of my home church. I felt overwhelmed by how much 
I loved them and how they had loved me through the years. By the time I stood in the pulpit, the fear had completely drained out of me. John tells us there's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Ask your heavenly Father to impart to you more of Christ's love and to take away any torment that you feel. As you do, fear will lose its grip on you. Number three, ask 